Hello and welcome back. Today I'm working on a fireplace set that I made for myself. Look at what I did! We're gonna go through how I made it. Whew, I'm getting distracted. Why I made it? For my own purposes and uses. What I made it out of? Hello and welcome to super serious blacksmithing and my slow descent into madness. Why is it so loud? What I'm actually working on today is making a fireplace set for my own fireplace. Uh, we've lived here for two years and I have still yet to actually make myself a decent poker and uh, fireplace shovel. Um, but today's the day. It's cold, if you can't tell. Uh, and uh, we have been using our fireplace here off and on basically since Christmas. And... Uh, yeah, the lack of proper fire tools has been a drag. I keep burning myself and my wife is angry about what I keep doing to the spatulas. So, we're gonna remedy that. Gonna get, uh, uh, I'm gonna copy my coal rake here. This is the first thing I did in my coal forge. It's nothing fancy, but uh, I actually really like it. I started with a piece of 3 8 by 3 quarter. Uh, this is just a random off cut in about the seven or eight inch range. This I am all but positive is going to be too short. I'm expecting probably to get about that much out of it. I'm not entirely sure, but what I'm going to do is as part of this test piece, which is going to end up being the actual piece because I'm too lazy to make things more than once in most cases. What I'm going to do is after I get the, the hole drifted, the twist done, uh, I'm going to make a mark, measure whatever's left, draw it out, and then we'll work out how much I need for the other end. So yeah, uh, I do have a fire started that is in the process of dying, and I need to get my blower back up uh, because unfortunately what you're hearing is not the blower, it is just the wind, which is not being very cooperative for audio quality today. You're welcome. All right, the tool set for today is a slitting chisel or a slitting punch or I don't know what you what you want to call it. Um, slot punch, I think that's the term. I don't know. It's not like I know what I'm doing. Um, it's just a uh, blunted chisel. Uh, if one were inclined, you could go buy one of these. This came from Tractor Supply and just blunt the, the end off it, square it off and use it for poking long skinny holes. Um, and then I'm gonna use a drift and an actual slitting chisel uh, for the pokey stabby end. I'm going in just a little bit more than the thickness of the parent material. Oh, uh, that way it doesn't get forged skinny when I go to uh, dress out the, the corners. I like to shear at basically black. I uh, think it's more effective. Comes out a little cleaner. Not that that's particularly clean, but you get what I mean. Or you don't. It's up to you. I'm not your real dad. It looks like I actually left a little bit too much material on there. I think that's close enough. I'm gonna leave it up to the uh, a file or a grinder to clean up the rest of that, I think. I'm going to put in my really crappy touch mark that you can see gets a ton of use on a regular basis. 
This thing's actually so bad. It's even off center, so I have to have this little mark on it so I know which end is up. Just to even keep it remotely square. Naturally, yeah, I think I'm just gonna have to live with that crappy stamp on it. Yeah, well, that's the best we could do. Yeah, see the entire center of it got missed. Part of it's because this thing's worn out. Part of it's because it was crap to begin with. A little shy on heat there. I'll go turn this one to the right. Oh, twisting too much in the middle. Yeah, I probably should have been paying closer attention to that, huh? I should have measured this before I got it hot. But we've got a little more than three inches. Looks like we're only going to need heat for that. <laughs> hey, where are you going? Where are you going? Now, this is what we ended up with. I really should have gotten a better measurement to uh, what we had to begin with. Uh, looks like overall we really only grew about an inch and a half um, which is kind of disappointing but um, anyway it's it's what we got and this got us about about start with some absolutes so we're at about <laughs> we're at eight and a half now to okay so it shrunk a nominal amount in the uh, in the twist and overall we grew an inch about here what did we start with I think three I'll have to look at the video and to <laughs> to track <laughs> it's four inches now whatever it was before I think it was three I think we got an inch out of it so almost all of our stretch then came out of came out of this not a whole lot out of there but uh, I'm not going all the way down to uh, half thickness. Like I'm not taking this down to 3 8 by 3 8 I'm actually taking it down to half inch roughly. Um, yeah, we're just under half an inch. 7 sixteenths, is that right? Yeah, we're at like 7 sixteenths down here at the end. Oh, uh, as opposed to going all the way down to uh, all the way down to 3 8 and I think that's a just nicer uh, section for that uh, I don't think it would be any problem for just a fire poker to be 3 8 square or even 3 8 round probably for that matter uh, if you're trying to do more than that with a fire poker then you really should probably get better at building fires more than trying to get heavier pokers I might go ahead and finish this for a poker anyway. I don't, I don't know. Um, I said I'm, I'm kind of a lazy person. Um, and I've got another four of these to make, five of these to make for the, the full set that I'm planning to make. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna have some lunch and think about it. And uh, I will come back and I will either have a new one of these in process of being drawn back out or I will uh, be welding something onto the other end of this.
All right, so this one came out quite a bit nicer. The twist's more even. Still got a little bit tight down here at the bottom, but uh, I'm not gonna complain about it. Oh. Uh, the uh, thing I forgot to mention before, oh, uh, and something that I forgot about mid-twist on the first one, is that uh, I don't go a full 360 or 180. Oh, uh, I'm actually uh, 90 degrees off from the first section. That's the way the first one was made, and it sits really nice in the hand that way and gives the whole thing some more dimension uh, and a little bit better feel in the hand. Uh, but uh, so this is basically our our start now. I'm gonna flip it over, get this end hot, uh, and put our poker end on it. Uh, and then once that's done, then we'll go ahead and do the the boring part and draw the rest of it out. What I'm probably gonna end up doing is drawing uh, drawing out about an inch and a half at the end. Um, I'm guessing uh, just to get the tapers to look right. I'm probably gonna want about three inches worth of uh, uh, three inches worth of poker and we'll probably need at least that to get uh, a good uh, proportionate hook. For reference I started with 20 inches of material here uh, and the overall length of my rake is about 24. There we go. I'm pulling really hard and hitting on the shank to pull that up instead of messing with this because I don't want to distort uh, this and then have to rework all this taper. I think this is pretty well where I want the, the business end. I think I'm going to start that taper right about there. Actually, I'll put a shoulder in it. I'll take out the guillotine and we'll make a nice clean step right there. I'm going to go for a sharp corner on the outside and then round it on the inside.
All right, so all we have left is our finish work. We came out almost where I wanted. Uh, overall, we are 25 and a half inches. So it only grew an inch and a half more than I expected to get it all worked out the way it came. Um, so yeah, it grew five and a half inches to make this. We figure I'm gonna put about a 10 inch shovel on the other one. So let's say we've got roughly 15 and a half. Um, and since this is where most of our growth happened, let's say uh, we'd probably want 13 and a half for that. We'll go 14 so we can put a boss on the end to rivet the shovel to. to hold and I've got a little bit of a cold shut in there I want to file out so I haven't really been talking to you this part of this uh, project mostly because I'm completely winging it I have no idea what or how this is actually going to come out Wow. I have an idea how the metal's supposed to move around. That's about it. This is obviously going to take a few heats. Uh, what I'm going for is I actually want this same basic shape that we've got over here, but the other way around. So I actually want it narrower on the foot or at the toe uh, and wider at the heel because ideally what I'm planning to do is put one rivet next to the handle on either side and then one down at the bottom over here somewhere. Hopefully I can get quite a bit more size out of this before, uh, before it gets too thin. Um, it'll just depend on how much of it goes into scale. Uh, this stuff is why I absolutely love blacksmithing. Being able to just move stuff around like this. Oh, you changed your mind? All right.
I don't think I'm gonna get that shape I'm after. Oh, uh, at least not without a bunch of grind. Well, no, I guess if I get it up here, get the whole thing hot now and hit here, I think I'll be able to smush this down this way, push it out a little bit, and then draw this way. I think, maybe, I hope. So now I'm using like a three quarter pound uh, tanner's hammer uh, because hammer selection is important here. The heavier your hammer, the more you're gonna affect it down through the middle. A lighter hammer is mostly gonna work right at the surface where you're hitting. See how we're pulling out, mushrooming up a lot, a lot at the top? Uh, in theory, with a heavy hammer, you can actually get it to go convex and bow out this way, kind of like you see here where I was hitting with the heavier hammer. We've got a little bit of a convex shape there where I was hitting. Now granted, some of that was from me rounding it back up, but uh, the lighter the hammer, the more superficial the material movement is gonna be. And when you're trying to rearrange stuff, that's exactly what you wanna do. If you see me swinging a big heavy hammer, there is definitely a purpose behind it. some of this back down this way. Now that it's getting cooler, a bigger hammer, and I can do that. I've got enough material I can mostly just do some blending and uh, blending, planishing, and then work on spreading it to the dimensions I want. All right, day two of our fireplace tool set, and I need to finish making our shovel. We came out to 16 inches, uh, which leaves us roughly uh, nine and a half inches to make our uh, the actual shovel itself. I want something that's pretty close to straight sided and uh, with a rounded back. I'll have to reshape this once we actually have the shovel pan ready. This is roughly 14 gauge. 
Uh, I'm just experimenting. I want to see how it works out. And so this is the time to do it. But I do want a little bit of a uh, raised heel on the top of the shovel so that it can be used for scraping stuff to the center so it can be picked up. Because uh, I don't intend to add a broom to this kit. So yeah, I basically want to be able to do all the cleanup with the shovel. So say about nine inches width. Um, and then we've got nine and a half for the length of the shovel itself. And we'll add an inch and a half to that. So basically I want to cut uh, that out. Oh, I'll probably just cut straight across and then cut this way. Use the shear, make it easy. That's why I have it. I don't want to move the shear. I think I'm just barely going to have enough room to cut this. <laughs> Let's see. Eh, close enough. And as per usual, I am just winging it with this project. Um, do you not like the hammering? Hmm. Is that too loud? No. We're going to put you back inside. I think we're narrowing in on the rough shape I want. It is going to need to be shortened up.
I think the shovel came out okay. Uh, the, the rivets all line up on this side where I did my marking out, but for some reason on the back side here, they are wildly erratic. I don't know if it's just a, an adjustment that I made while I was setting the heads on this side that I automatically recentered them. Yeah, no, that's exactly what I did. <laughs> I moved the heads over as I was setting these rivets to center them so that they looked right. I, I always tend to screw up layouts like this. Uh, I don't, don't really know how or why that ends up happening. It's something I, I mess up a lot. You saw I was trying to use a center finding ruler and tried to mark it out, you know, correctly and so on. Um, but most of the time, I think I really just do better when I eyeball stuff like that. Like I said, I have been using this set for like the last week and I think 14 gauge actually ended up being perfect for the, the pan of the shovel. Uh, it's got a really good feel to it. It's not overly heavy. It doesn't sound super cheap and tinny and I don't dent it when knock it up against stuff in the for or for the where do I use this the fireplace knocking it against the log holder it's got a good weight uh doesn't feel cheap uh, but it's not flimsy and it's more than rigid enough for our uses the sides that I put on it actually work out really well you can just kind of flip the shovel over and use it to scrape the uh the corners of the fireplace out without having to use a broom or anything like that so since this is running a little bit longer than i originally planned i'm going to go ahead and split this up into two parts you've just seen the uh, fire poker and the shovel being made and uh sometime in the next couple days or week or month or year in part two we'll get to making the tongs and the stand and be able to conclude this and move on to my next project